All right, so here we go. So we are looking at the math, um, math learning center. Thank you, Sam. That's uh, that's what happens when you just give up, give up on life, right? So I shouldn't say that yours looks much better, but uh, that was my excuse. Um, we we're looking at the math learning center. I just threw a link into the uh, chat if you want to click on it and open and follow along. We're going to look at some of the new resources on there. I'm not going to highlight the exact same ones that I think some people have seen before. And I'll try and highlight some of the other ones and, and give you examples of, of where this might be used. So I'm going to present my entire screen so that you guys can uh, see here. And we'll flip back and forth a little bit here. And, and please feel free if I throw up a link um, to, uh, to share it, uh, because you do have the ability in some cases to share, jump on in there and, and see what's going on. I'm going to try and share with my virtual account. Uh, and so to be able to sort of show you the, the student side as well. But the Math Learning Center is out of Oregon. Uh, they have a whole bunch of stuff on here. Specifically, if anybody's aware of kind of the stuff that goes on in the States, they sort of do their own curriculum. There's no provincial or statewide curriculum in some cases. Uh, I guess not provincial, but statewide or area wide. So, so a lot of different uh, places like this will develop a curriculum that's for play. So, so there, a, a lot of these apps you'll see are based on this bridges and mathematics. It's a pre K to five curriculum that they've done. I haven't looked at it uh, in depth, but it's a lot on the Common Core and stuff like that. So, um, just so you know where this is all coming from. All right, so up top here, it talks about sharing. Sharing is new here. Sharing we're gonna get into. There's two kind of ways that you can share some of these apps. Some of them support sharing and other ones do not. So it really depends on what we're looking at as to what supports sharing. We're gonna jump into the math clock one right away. I'm gonna use that one as our example to show you some stuff. And then we'll kind of, uh, we'll move on from there. Um, Actually, you know what? I'm going to start with number frames because I know that number frames support sharing and has some of the other data that I want. So just so you're aware, there is a web app. Web apps can be open from any web browser. There is a iOS app for some of these and not all of them. So again, a install on iOS shows up, uh, can still be accessed through the web app though. And then there's a Chrome store one. So the Chrome store one, if we pop up here, I'll show you on mine, uh, number frames right here. It's essentially just a glorified bookmark. The app is ever so slightly different, um, but the functionality is exactly the same. It is a simple way if we're dealing with young learners to just have that on there and say, okay, go to the number frames in your Chrome and they know exactly where to go. We can also take that and we can pin it to the shelf and so now it's down here on the shelf and our kids can see it right away. It's an easy one for them to go and see. So I'm gonna pop into number frames. And I just went into the link here because I wanted to show you a few things. With a lot of these and not all of them, there's some additional information up front. There's some discussions about what's included in the app, how it relates to bridges and mathematics and stuff like that. But then down below on some of them is a little video to say, get more from this app. So it essentially walks you through some of the different ideas that they have on how you could use this app. And it kind of really quickly goes through just talking about what you could do with kids with regards to that. It's something that I would suggest taking a look at. The video is paused from time to time and you can jump back and forth for, through some of the different topics. I'll load it up here and uh, we'll just jump ahead. And I want to show you, if you look down the side here, there's some different links and you can click ahead to some of the different links uh, or some of the different topics to sort of just go, oh, we're working on multiplication. I don't want to sit through the whole video. I just want to jump up to that. So, so it's definitely something that I think is somewhat useful. The other things that sometimes it'll have, no, we'll show you in a different one. Uh, sometimes there's some additional resources inside of this. So instead of just jumping right to the app, sometimes you wanna pop in here and take a look. Apps are fairly straightforward. There's really nothing fantastic and nothing uh, crazy around them. 
there's some fun little things that you can do inside of some of them, but essentially they're really straightforward. If we're doing number frames, we click on our number frame and we tell it which one we want. So we're gonna bring out a 10 frame, oops, and it brings out a 10 frames for us. We have two different colors of tokens. We can change the colors of these. We can use all of the colors they have available to us. And then we can also change what they look like. So right now we just have regular tokens. If I bring out a five, I can click in here and it will fill in the fives for me. And so we can just drop them. So again, just getting the kids to start to work with them on here or setting up a problem that we want the kids to have. So potentially what we want to do is we want to use this, set something out, share it with the kids, have them interact with it, or drop it into a uh, an image file, export an image file and drop that into maybe a document or something like that and make them uh, and, you know, and then they interact with it in that way. So, uh, but what was I saying? Okay, so we have the red dots down here. We can change the shape. So if we say we actually want it to be, you know, yellow butterflies, then boom, we can do yellow butterflies and the kids can change that on the fly as well. Once we have that all set up, you can start to pull stuff outside of there and we can drop stuff back into there. Okay. Oops. We can change colors uh, on the fly. So again, if we ask the kids to identify something, we'll get rid of these butterflies. I'm gonna draw a circle around them and we're gonna delete them. We'll go back to our red circles and bring them in here. If we could ask the students to, you know, okay, now that we have 10, we want you to identify seven. How do we, how do we represent seven and 10? So we may say, they might say, oh, we want to highlight those three and change them to a different color. And then we get the students to start talking about, okay, we had 10, we took away three. Those are represented by the green ones. And then we have seven left. We can also get them to start writing out the math on that. Oops. So then they can show their work as they're going through. So just a, a way to demonstrate their understanding, right? You can, if you want to set this up, let's, uh, let's get rid of that. If we wanted to set up this problem, you know what, we'll, we'll share it. But if you wanted to set up this problem and then write something, so demonstrate seven using the tens, block. I was a high school guy, so I, I'm probably using the really wrong words here and stuff like that. But, um, and then share that with the students and they interact with that. You could do that as well to get it all set up. Down here, we have our drawing tools. We click on the drawing tools. We have the ability to draw a straight line, a curvy line, erase or erase the entire thing. So if we wanted then the students, if the students had a touch interface, an iPad or a touch screen, I wouldn't recommend it with a mouse and I wouldn't recommend it with a trackpad. But if they had some type of touch interface, we could definitely make use of that and have them start drawing on there as well. Or if you had one and you wanted to start drawing on there. All right, so now we come down to the fun bit, which is sharing. There's two icons for sharing. One is the code, right? And that's if we give the kids a code to enter in here. So I'll put mine up here, no big deal. If you guys wanna jump in, you will see exactly what I'm seeing. You're gonna to come to this key and that's how you're gonna open up. The other one is the share button. So when I click the share button, this is where I can export it as an image. So if I wanted to use it in a, um, a document or something like that, some type of worksheet I was creating, I can copy the link and I can share that link. So if I was doing it in Google Classroom, I could share that link. Everybody's gonna open up to that exact same page and they are all they are all going to get their own website. So it's not as though everybody's coming into this one and taking a look at it and going, okay, we're just all firing in on the same document, that pure chaos. They all get their own link and they can submit it. And then they could return it with their completed one. So I could send this to the students as an assignment. They could finish that assignment and inside of Google Classroom, we'll show you that in just a second here. 
um, they could copy that link and they could submit that link as their answer. So now I can go in and see their individual work or you can share that code. So if anybody is out there and they want to take a look at it, pop open that code, you can enter it in into the, into the key, into the join code and, uh, and you can go off from there. So I'm going to jump in and I'm going to switch over to, this is a student account. So I can paste that link and it's going to take me to the exact thing that I had set up. Now, this is not live synced. So any work the student does, does not show up on mine. And any work that I add to it does not show up on those. It's not a back and forth type thing. It is a one way direction. I'm going to uh, just grab this. And I am really quickly going to just, oops. Squiggle a line on here because, and then I'm going to say, okay, I want to share it back with my teacher. So I'm going to grab that copy link. I should have had this open before. I'm going to view the assignment and I'm going to click. So if, again, I'm the student here, I want to share this back with the teacher. Right up here under my my work or your work, I'm going to add a link. And now I can just paste that link in there. And it's good. It'll just take a second. I can turn that in. And now I've submitted my work. I've done the question. I've submitted my work. And, and it's all done. So it's an easy way to get the kids showing with manipulatives what they're actually doing. So as I'm going along here, if you guys have any questions, please fire them into the chat window uh, or unmute your mic. We're a small enough group. I don't mind. Unmute your mic and just ask those questions in there. So I'm going to close this guy. And Come back to the math apps. All right, number clock. I like number clock for fractions. Number clock is fairly straightforward. Actually, I was thinking because we always used to do in uh, Math 30, we'd do some trigonometry stuff. And we would talk about how how many radians does a, uh, the, or what distance does the end of a minute hand pass through within 47 minutes or something like that. And so this is one where you could actually uh, show that. I'll just open up the web app here. We could actually show that by adding a clock. Uh, we're just going to do free moving hands. Oops, we want to do fractions. Let's go to fractions. We'll do 60 fractions. It's okay, and I should be able to, oh, right here. That's the one I wanted. I'm gonna do a minute hand. There we go, let's change fractions a little bit less. I'm gonna do a minute hand. And I should be able to click on it. I just had this going the other night. That's a duplicate. I don't want to do that. I'm going to come back to that one. I'm going to figure that one out because I feel like I'm stumbling here. But I know I was able to track and it was able to shade for me as that hand moved around. Well, let's try the last one. That's free moving. There's geared. Let's put the geared ones in there. And ah, uh, here we go. Run and jump mode. So I can I can jump by a certain time, which would allow me to move forward in five minute stints. But I can also. Let's 
turn off this. Let's get rid of that. So I can also do an elapsed time. And now if I do run, oh, we're not going to do seconds. We'll do jump. It would allow us to travel by a certain amount of time. And we could see that visual representation. You also get the little ghosting back here of your different clocks. So, I mean, it's just something kind of silly, but maybe we see some applications in some of our higher level ones as well. Or maybe we just want to make use of it uh, for some worksheets, for some, uh, for some visual representations for our students when we're trying to explain a concept. I want to come down to math vocabulary cards. I was taking a look at the math vocabulary cards last night, and here's another one where, oops, no, this isn't the one. I thought we got some additional resources. There's one that we have some additional resources in here. With the math vocabulary cards, they're limited to our younger grades. So uh, there's two sets, K and two, and then three to five. And it allows you to pick specific topics. So if we only wanted numbers, we could do that. So let's uncheck all. Let's go to numbers and just use those. And now it's going to give us three different pieces of information here. And it's straight up there. In this case, it's asking for the vocabulary word. So when we click on the show hide, it will show us the word. But we have the option to set it up and ask students to, we have greater than, come up with that example. Or maybe we have the example greater than, and they have to come up with the definition. So just some different ways of looking through it. We can go one by one. Yeah, this would be good for ESL. We can, uh, we can choose which one we wanna show or hide in general down here. And it'll update it accordingly. And then we can go one by one or we could jump a whole set of cards at once. So we can go in any order. You can also do it with a mouse, just sliding the mouse in one direction or another will allow you, and sorry if anybody's getting sick there, but it'll allow you to really slide through at a quicker pace, right? So we have those vocabulary cards that are pre-made. We can, again, make use of those. There is no share on this one but we could have our students come here. And I mean, this would be a great resource, I think with families to access that and work with at home. Here's what we're working on, assign those to them, let the moms and dads know how to do it, and then give them an activity to work with our kids with at home, so. The other one I was looking at last night was patterns and shapes. And I always, you know, sort of thought of this one differently. And this one actually does have those are blocks. Yeah, down here, it has some lessons and some of them, so this is down below the get more from this app video. Some of them have some additional lesson books that you can download. These are free to download. I would not say that just because it says K to two, uh, it's K to two for us up here. Um, it's probably fairly close with Common Core, but we know that they are certainly off by a different, by by some level, grade level or something like that. But it's some additional activities that you can get into. You can take a look. You can print them off. You can just have them online. And uh, some of them have printouts, so Black Line Masters, and others are just activities. So they just give you an activity that you can do. So again, we can have activities that we're asking our kids to do, and then we get them to go to the actual, uh, the actual web app and just make use of that. All right, so I'm gonna jump into this guy here. There's a whole bunch that you can do. You can turn the grids on and off, but all I wanted to do to show you with this one, if we bring out a topic and, and we can connect different shapes in here, uh, I think my uh, headset's going to die here. So um, we can connect different shapes in here. But what I wanted to show you was we can actually bring in a protractor, which I thought was pretty cool because it allows us to kind of line it up and start to think about angles and stuff like that. And so we can start to create more angles. We can, t we can talk about, you know, what? Well, 
I mean, essentially it allows us a visual representation of angles that's easy to manipulate. So I, I was looking at that one. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was really interesting with regards to this. In the video for this one, they have a really neat example of using ants and these uh, hexagons, um, just a little drawn ant, um, to represent fractions and start talking to kids about fractions and sharing and stuff like that. So there was some really interesting stuff that I thought uh, just looking at it. That, that might be kind of useful, might be kind of neat um, and things like that. But a whole bunch of different ways to use these tools that uh, I think are interesting. So, so I'm gonna pop back to the chat window here. Great for you, so we got that. I'm gonna look at my notes. We talked about sharing, we talked about get more from this app. We showed you some of the apps. The other ones that are available Actually, I'm going to, I'll open up. Um, this document is available to you guys as well. So all of the uh, all of the activities that I've been doing here, did I move it in here? Math Learning Center. There we go. All the activities and all of the recordings and everything are available inside of here. I'll drop this if you want uh, inside of the chat window. And you guys are more than welcome to grab this, share this. Uh, no big deal. But I wanted to show you the Math Learning Center. And I just grabbed their information. I didn't do anything fancy with it, uh, but I wanted to throw it out in a document um, so that you guys, and these are all linked as well. But essentially, math clock, number frames, those are our 10 blocks. Our number line is kind of interesting in that you can do jumps. So you can set that up uh, without numbers in there and do jumps by different factors. We can go and take a look at that. The number pieces uh, is interesting. These are your 10 blocks. So these are more of your block type things that you can break up. The number rack I was playing around with, I know that there's some interesting things and I can't remember which teacher it is that has it on a big long string. She uses strings and clips on that string to represent numbers. That could also be done with the number rack. Um, fractions is interesting, but I dig fractions anyway. Geoboard, I always had a bunch of those in my class, but I never used them because you just end up with elastics all around the room. So vocabulary cards we looked at. Money pieces is US funds. So just be aware of that if you decide to use that. And patterns and shapes. The one that I didn't put on here is at the very bottom, and this is just a new one that came out at the beginning of this year, is the partial product finder. And this is kind of neat. It's only available in uh, on the web app. But essentially what it allows you to do is take any product. So if we want to do five times five is easy. Let's do six times eight. And it'll adjust this accordingly. We can turn the math on or off. So this little math down here, we can turn it on or off. So we'll just turn it off. Oops. Oh, sorry. The answers we can turn on or off. Um, but what we can do with this is we can start splitting it up into smaller groups. So we know that six times two is 12. Well, let's make how many six times twos do we have? And we can start to split it up into six times twos. Maybe we don't know our six times twos, but maybe we know our two times twos. And so we can start to split it up into all of these different groups to help kids. Now, this to me is very confusing. I don't, to me, I, I am, yeah, I'm overwhelmed with the number of two times twos there, but perhaps not going to that extent or perhaps making it, you know, in a different manner, we could, uh, we could make it not so confusing for students and they can make use of that. So that one I find kind of interesting. Let's get rid of this to make it a little simpler. And then we can show all the numbers that we're adding up to get that product. So something that, that is not super difficult, um, but, but might help us to demonstrate the understanding of what we have going on with these students. The other one I told you I would show you was number pieces. 
This one is interesting to me. Again, I'm not going to pretend I know how we would use them. I'm just going to show you what I would do. So there's a hundred block. What I can do with that hundred block is I can break it up. So you don't have to pick them out one by one. You can break them out on mass, and then I can split that up again to break those pieces into of my ten blocks down. So if I wanted to really quickly separate it, you could do that. Uh, or if you were demonstrating a concept for your students, you could really quickly break it apart without having to, you know, time lapse that video or something. The other thing is if you circle them, you can squeeze them all back together. So you can join them all back into to that block. Uh, you can rotate the blocks. You can do whatever you want. You can change the colors of them if you like. Um, but you can do lots of different things in here just using the tools down below. And okay, the last one I said, and, and I know I'm really just rushing through here. I just want to make sure that you guys see this is the number lines. The number lines are interesting as well. Fairly straightforward, fairly simple. We're going to make the spacing on this a little bit more. We're going to give us whole numbers. We won't worry about fractions yet. We can, and we're going to start obviously at the number 123. Why would we not? And it just gives us a number line. Now what we can do is we can pull up our little skip counter there. And so now we can ask the students what we're skip counting by. We can turn off the numbers from the bottom and we can identify the numbers just by clicking on them. We can stretch this out, click up here to give us a specific number if we didn't have numbers on the bottom. So we could say that that is five and it should, oops. Thought it would give us a five there. Oh no, the five comes down here. One, two, three, four, five. And so now we're asking students to identify what those two numbers are, right? So again, I mean, just a, a silly, silly little thing uh, to do. Nothing really big, nothing really exciting. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a simple, simple tool for online learning to get kids to demonstrate what's going on in a visual sense and and to be able to talk through it to me it's it's making that that math visible and to get them to show it and then describe what they're knowing so then they're they're talking through their learning and talking through their understanding of it so um i will stop presenting now i uh i just wanted to show you guys that i didn't know how many of you were aware of those tools i hope that that kind of met some of your needs i hope you guys can find a place in your class for some of these i i think that there's some useful stuff in there at some point but uh if you have any questions if you want to chime in with examples if anybody is using these uh just crack open your mic and just let us know otherwise uh thanks for your time and uh we'll see you again and i'll stick around for a bit here <laughs> you are all welcome i hope you found some value in this so that's good thank you i'm going to stop the recording here too <laughs>